Hello everyone, Neil for T-Shares here, coming at you with another video for Tetra, where we automate your DeFi. Thank you for coming to my channel. If you would, please like, share, and subscribe. And today we will take a look at Omnis, our new multi-dex aggregator with limit order capability. Yes, you heard that right. Limit orders are coming to Pulse Chain. So let's take a look at now these functions of this product and see how we can use it to benefit your DeFi experience. So let's take a look at Omnis now, our DEX aggregator, look at some of the features that we have uh, in store for us that are available to use right now. So our DEX aggregator, what it does is seeks out the best deal on all the DEXs linked to Omnis on chain. So it'll go through and find the best route and give you the best price for your trade. Like any other interface, you have the option to switch, switch sides with your assets. And... We have some unique features to Omnis that will hopefully help you uh, to uh, maybe manage your, your trades, manage your wallets, and your assets. Uh, one, of the need to, one of the neat features we offer is a 5v1 swap. So instead of just swapping one token for one, you can add tokens to the swap up to five. And so here we, we could take five separate tokens and swap for one. And that, as a feature, is also uh, not only is it uh, uh, convenient, but it's also gas efficient. So all these tokens are wrapped up in one in one uh, transaction, thus being efficient, saving you gas. So it says, and also time too. Now you will have to uh, make approvals for each token uh, as you do this, but after those are made, it will save you roughly uh, around 50% uh, more in gas than if you would do each one of these individually. So that's one feature that uh, Omnis offers that's unique to Pulse Chain. Uh, the second feature is, in this gear icon, you, you click on it, you can set your slippage, uh, as if you're familiar with uh, most uh, uh, swap uh, functions and most exchanges, or manually put it in, in this field here. But you can also change where you want the tokens to be sent to. So if you don't want them to go in the same wallet that you're, that you're uh, currently in, if you want them somewhere else, Instead of making your swap, then turn around taking all your tokens and sending it over to another wallet. In one action, you can change your receiver address, and then you can swap up to five tokens at one time to an address of your choosing in one transaction, thus being even more gas efficient. So here again, we're trying to uh, here at, 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 with Tetra, we're trying to innovate and, and be uh, responsible and try to give you a best user experience on a blockchain, so you don't spend any more gas than you have to. So that's the basic features of, uh, of, the, uh, of the swap function on the DEX aggregator. Um, there's, uh, there's, there's, there's things that will be added to in, in features later. Um, there's, there's dollar uh, amounts are shown as well as the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the slippage and everything. And I'll show you that in just a moment. So here you can see the... Uh, the dollar amounts displayed under each asset uh, token count you have in your wallet. This will help you uh, get a better feeling what you have in the current market conditions. Uh, and you come down here, you can click this arrow here, and it will show you the slippage fee. I mean, the slippage you'll pay as what well, you set up here at the gear wheel, as well as the swap fee to make the swap. Then, and this you can click this button here to see check the ratio. In this case, it's the first asset to your your your. Uh, receiving asset and, and check it in different terms based upon that ratio. Uh, if we were to hit the swap, we can see that in order to make swap three tokens from one and even change this receiver address, we'd only run about 245 pulse to do so, which is a, a good savings uh, for you to utilize in pulse chain. So here we're trying to keep innovating and trying to keep developing these things to make it more user friendly and more efficient uh, to save you gas in the long run. So now we're going to stop this and we'll take a look at the limit orders and how they function and that new exciting feature that's coming to Pulse Chain for the first time. Okay, now let's talk about limit orders. We're something we're all excited for and we're waiting for and I'm sure you've fast forwarded uh, through this video to get to this point, which is understandable because it's exciting. So we're, first we're going to talk about how Omnis works uh, in aggregating and doing these limit orders. Because unlike other chains, 
Pulse Chain does not have a, a, a order book or anything like that to pull the price feeds from. So what Amos is doing, it is actually going and getting the chain, the data uh, from each DEX on the chain, and then calculating out the best route to swap into to uh, deploy the limit order at the point of your choosing. So it's a new thing we're building from scratch to do this. Now, uh, because we're using you know uh, uh, the the tools through uh, uh, AMM uh, to do this, okay. So it's a little different than what you've heard in the past. So this is something that's an new and innovative, at least for us and for the, for the chain. Now, let's talk about some of the features here. So just like this, you can click on uh, the uh, the the icon up here for the gear, and you can change your slippage which we'll talk about in just a moment, as well as your receiver address, just like you could on the swap, okay? Um, here you can see the price feed and your tokens, and you can swap one token for another. Uh, so that's, and you can change your, 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 your uh, what's on top here. Uh, so we can change this to say die, whatever. And what you get, and show you the price and everything. And then we have a slider. So when you go to make a, a trade, if we just click, if we want to just make a swap at market value, we don't need to use limit order, we just go to the swap button. But here we can click on the slider button, and it'll give you the percentages. And as you increase your percentage, it's always going to give you a better deal, okay, to trade. So right now, for instance, I want to trade, I have 18, uh, you know, cents, let's say, of die, I want to get some pulse. But if I, you can see, I have 19 cents of die, but if I set my slippage, my percentage up to 7%, I'll receive roughly 20 cents a pulse, or 3,904 pulse. If I stay at market, I'll only get 36. But the whole point of limit order, limit order is to get a better deal and get more tokens for your dollar when the price moves in your favor. So you ex we can move the slider, or in this case, you can switch your ratio around and adjust it manually say I don't want I may want to make this uh, a two now I'm up a little bit I'm, I'm, I'm a little more than seven percent or I make uh, this a one now I'm only six percent okay wait a minute why did it go zero? Oh, I'm no longer in a good trade because at market I'm night I'm at 19 here if I'm at 11 I'm below the market rate. I will go against myself. I'll be trading 18 cents for a die. I'll be getting probably 15 cents a pulse. That's a bad deal. I'll, I'd, I'd make a mistake. What Amos is doing here is keeping you from making a mistake by always giving you at market or better deals. Well, actually, always a better deal in market by just a little bit at first. Then you go up 1%, I get a better deal. I go another percent, I get a better deal. As you see, I get it's more pulse per die in my ratio, okay? If you want to do things in, in die terms, you can flip it up. It's like, okay, now I have this many die per pulse. You know, I can go down and change the ratio here. So the number gets bigger as you go down and smaller as you, you get a better deal. So if I put this to three, now I'm at 39% above or better than a market rate, okay? So no matter what, you really can't, the way Omnis is designed with this functionality, you cannot trade against yourself fat finger, make a mistake, type the wrong button or anything. You will always be better than the previous position you were with the limit order. And how much is up to you. So you cannot trade against yourself or hurt yourself through this, this feature. Okay? It's important. <clears throat> so we see this and we can trade, change our ratios. We can see the fee takes the execute limit order and the gas in order the gas uh, fee is a flat rate of 50 pulse to set the limit order. And then you're, you can you can either have some preset days uh, uh, to have limit order open, or you can pick go to the calendar and pick a date in the future. It's your choice. Now, with this fee, I want to let you all be aware that this limit order execution fee is to um, set the limit order as well as to cancel it. So if I, if I have an order that was open, which I don't have in this on this particular test wallet. Um, you, if you wanted to cancel your order, it would cost you that you'd still be paying this fee to cancel it. So keep that in mind when you set your orders. Now, it's not a lot. It's a small fee, but if you have large amounts of money, it will, it will, it will be significant if you set an order for, you know, like $50,000 or something, okay? 
So, but that's the cost of doing business, and this is just something it takes uh, uh, to run and to keep things flowing. Okay. Now, using limit orders is a, is a good tool, but it's also something you have to consider about how the uh, how the function of a DEX aggregation uh, works in slippage within the system. Okay, it's, it's hard. It's, it's a complicated thing, but I'm trying to explain it very simply. I'm going to deck screen it out. We're going to look at uh, wicks and candles, and I'll explain to you why setting the slippage is important and what it means for you using limit orders. All right, now let's take a look at how we need to think about setting slippage on our limit orders and how it functions in uh, Omnis's uh, aggregation method on the blockchain. Because Remember, we don't have order books, so there's no place that you can place an order uh, and people on the other side of the order, and you can you can guarantee to uh, have your order execute when it goes through your range. That's not how it works with uh, a decentralized exchange and uh, its functionality, okay, because of the dynamics of the system. Now, that being said, let's, let's look at these this good example here of the USDL uh, pulse pair, and how what what would happen with with your limit orders if you place them in certain points? So let's say you you had bought uh, you bought pulse. I mean, you bought USDL here down say at ninety eight cents around here, and you said, "Well, I want I want to do is you bought it here. Let's say I want to sell it for a dollar one. That's that was your price point. I think it's going to go up here. That was your prediction. And if you did not set your slippage up high enough, that you only had a half percent." When this wick happened, and people were, let's say, uh, competing against you in limit order stuff, and they had high with higher slippage, th when this buy happened, you would have been left behind and would have blown past your limit order because it wouldn't deploy because your slippage was too low. And by the time it settled and, and finished its uh, uh, the uh, the wick, and all the buys and sells in that wick finished, you were too far away, and you'd have missed out the trade. So. You would need to to get uh, take advantage of this. You would have to set your slippage up high enough, like three, five percent, or maybe even higher, to, to make that uh, uh, in limit order execute when this would happen. Um, and so, what you'd have done is, let's say, if you set say three or five percent when this trade happened, what it was done, it would have pushed your average buy up higher to where you'd, I mean, sell up higher where you end up selling, let's say, at a dollar four instead of a dollar one, and you'd have made, you know. That much more on your on your trade for this instance, so that's some, that's good. And that's something to consider to always you know, think about the slippage you set your your trades at on your limit orders. But there's always two sides of every every coin. Now the same holds true to the other side on a downward action. Let's say you were trying to sell at a dollar three. Well. If the if if your limit order was set, let's say, uh, at a too low of amount, it'd have blown past your limit order. You wouldn't have sold at all, and you'd have been stuck in this position, not be able to sell. And let's say the price ran against you and didn't go back up for a while, you'd have to cancel your limit order in order to you know and redeploy it somewhere else. But let's say you did set your slippage up high enough, thinking, "Are oh, you going to make it?" Well, what would have happened was, once it started deploying and the price kept pushing down further and further past you, you'd end up at the end of this wick, or toward the end, getting less for your tokens on your sale, thus getting less for your trade. Hence, it's a double-edged sword, and it takes you as an individual who uses these, these, these tools to, to know the risks and rewards by using the limit orders as setting your slippage. Now, if you keep your slippage low, more likely on actions like this that move up and down in very small amounts, they'll deploy like normal because there's not a whole lot of action and a lot of volume at any given point, and they, they will deploy as normal. Uh, but in cases where you have big wicks and high volumes going through, running you know fifty and hundred thousand dollar wicks that are pushing prices up and down such in such violent manner, these are things are hard to catch. And then you're taking a, you need to know you're going to be taking a gamble on whichever side of that trade you're on, because right here, as you can see, there was both up and down action within just a few seconds of each other, that somebody could have either. Uh, made some money or lost some money, depending on how they set their limit orders up and their slippage. So now that we looked at slippage and its importance and how uh, we need to be responsible 
when we set it. Uh, once we set our limit orders, the, uh, the UI will have a list of orders that are open and your order history, the ones that have been completed. So you can see you have what you uh, you know, place your order from and the, and the token you, you, you wish to receive, uh, the limit price at any given time, and based upon the ratio you're looking for, its status, whether or not it's open or expired. When it expires and the date, some more info about it, telling you the ratio at the time, and your ability to cancel the order. You also have these little buttons here that you can kind of hide the column if you want to see that, or if you don't see, it, or you can filter it or, or sort it in different ways. Uh, and once you place your orders and they're done and they deploy, you have order history that you can always go back to and look, and you can see what you what, what order history you have, and you can click this button here. You'll go to uh, the uh, pulse scan. It'll show you in detail on pulse scan what the order did and when it deployed and you can see exactly what the gas you paid and all that stuff and all the information about that transaction okay you can also change the number of rows of, of these you see per page by clicking here and then once you have like say over like 20 or 30 orders then you will have 10 you can click over left and right and it'll show you the uh, the information on order history as well as open orders so this is the, the limit order uh, function there will be more uh, and, and tools there will be more functionality coming in the future so um, we'll be adding more UI features and as well as some bells and whistles and as well as, you know, some, uh, you know, some better and more efficient functionality as we develop and, and hone these, uh, these tools to, uh, to the uh, community's liking. And we will, and we also are willing to uh, accept feedback and people have any ideas or ways to make it better, uh, more understandable, user-friendly. Please feel free to contact us and let us know. Well, I hope this video was informative. And educational for you as we took a look at the Omnis functionality with the multi-x aggregator and its limit orders. Um, we, I'm, we're all excited for the uh, limit orders coming to chain. Uh, it's revolutionary and with Omnis you'll be able to rest peacefully at night knowing that you can set your trades and they'll be executed uh, while you're away. Uh, well thank you for coming to this channel. Please consider like, share, and subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, we have links below to our Telegram channel as well as into this YouTube description. Uh, you can share your comments and, and questions, and we'll be, we'll be glad to uh, answer anything. And we're always available. We have a good team of admins who, are, are work, who work hard to uh, you know, answer questions and help the community in the way we can. Well, that's all I have today, folks. Uh, so with Omnis, I wish you uh, a good fortune, and I hope you, uh, this will enhance your DeFi experience. Well, this is Neil for T-Shares for Tetra, signing off. Have a nice day, and take care.